The coronavirus vaccine developed by Oxford University and AstraZeneca has been approved for use in the UK. Around 530,000 doses will be available from Monday. The UK government has ordered 100 million doses of the vaccine, enough to vaccinate 50 million people people. Well, you have been sending in your questions all day and with me to answer some of the many questions we've received is Dr. Maheshi Ramasamy, an investigator for the Oxford Vaccine Group. I think we have to first of all start by thanking you for all your tremendous hard work and saying congratulations. How do you feel? Thank you. Very excited. It's um, a we're, we're all just so thrilled and delighted today. But I have to say, this is a huge team effort. There are lots of people who've been working really hard on delivering this project, who've been working hard throughout the year. So it's a really massive team effort. I think, well, on behalf of everybody watching and all, all of us here in the BBC newsroom, thank you. It's, it's just tremendous news. Lots and lots of questions, as I mentioned. So let's get started straight away. And Peter is asking, who will get, ah, the million dollar question, who will get the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine? So the committee that decides the prioritization of vaccine rollout is called the JCVI, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunization. And they have laid out a hierarchy of um, um, people across the UK and the order in which they need to be vaccinated. So for example, these include uh, people who live in care homes and uh, staff who work in those care homes, the elderly and frontline healthcare workers. And there are a variety of other groups as well, people with uh, comorbidities that put them at risk of developing COVID infection, as well as other older age groups. And so this comes to about 25 million people. And these are the, the first sets of people who will be offered the COVID-19 vaccines going forward. The JCVI hasn't um, uh, has said that either vaccine that's now uh, now approved, so either the Pfizer vaccine or the um, Oxford vaccine can be used across those groups. And I think what's really going to determine which vaccine you're offered is, is the logistics of vaccine rollout. So it might be that some people are offered the Pfizer vaccine easy for them to have it uh, because they're, for example, close to a, a, a hospital, whereas others will be offered the Oxford vaccine because they will receive it through their, for example, GP surgeries. What's important, though, is that you take the vaccine that you're offered, because what's critical really in preventing um, transmission and severe disease is that we have good coverage of, of, of with vaccine, so good uptake of the vaccine across the population. So it's a question of logistics. What about allergies? Linda is asking that is, is noting that she has various allergies. How do I know if this will be safe for me to have? Doesn't specify what kind of allergies. The guidance released by the MHRA today is that the vaccine that you should avoid the vaccine if you are if you've had a previous allergic reaction to the components of the vaccine and the components of both the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford vaccine are listed are freely available on the um, UK government website um, and so for your listener I would say the thing to do is to um, to go through those with her health practitioner and to decide whether she is which of these two vaccines she would be able to have depending on her individual healthcare needs. Okay, uh, a question from Canada has come from Edward who is asking, and you're the perfect person to answer this, where is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine manufactured? The concern is that the supply chain could take longer to reach some parts of the world. So that's actually something that's um, not controlled by the University of Oxford, but is actually determined by AstraZeneca. One of the reasons the university partnered with AstraZeneca is because it has an extensive network of manufacturing capabilities and supply logistics around the world, um, which means that it's going to be able to very rapidly upscale production and deliver the vaccine to across the world. For the UK vaccine, um, this will be manufactured both in the UK and also in the Netherlands. The real advantage of the Oxford vaccine is that it can be stored between two and eight degrees, so in a normal fridge. And that's how most vaccines are normally rolled out across the country and across the world, in fact. So childhood immunizations or travel vaccines are usually stored at that temperature. So we can tap into the existing logistics networks used by healthcare professionals. And just a quick 
quick answer regarding um, the, the different types of vaccines. We know two have been approved. If you're given, Drew wants to know, the Pfizer-BioNTech jab as the first dose, can you then have the Oxford-AstraZeneca one as the second dose, or do both doses have to come from the same, uh, the same group, the same manufacturer? The MHRA approvals are based on having two doses of the same vaccine. So two doses of the Pfizer vaccine or two doses of the Oxford vaccine. Um, of course, it's a really interesting question as to whether or not you could have um, a combined schedule where you'd have one dose of perhaps an mRNA vaccine followed by a second dose of the Oxford vaccine. That's a really interesting question, which we're hoping to look at in a trial that we're going to start in the early part of next year but we don't have the data to support that just now. And very, very, very quickly, if you've got the first dose, then there's the 12 week delay in receiving the second dose. Is that because of logistics or a shortage of the vaccine? So you're so the vac so the Oxford vaccine um, is licensed to have your your the approval is based on having the second vaccine between four and 12 weeks. So at any time within that period, um, what we need, though, is to be able to provide protection very rapidly to as many people as possible, given the, the perilous state of the, of the pandemic as it is. So crucial to get as many people done quickly. Dr. Mahashi Ramasamy from the Oxford Vaccine Group, congratulations. Thank you for your time. And we're all so very grateful to you. Thank you.